Hello everyone, I have for you today a shark, which is a type of cartilaginous fish, uh, which means that its skeleton is mostly made up of cartilage and not bone. And this type of shark in particular is of the smaller uh, species known as a dogfish shark. Uh, the scientific name for this shark is Squalus acanthius. Um, means that it's a spiny dogfish shark because it has these venomous spines um, dorsal on its body that means on top of its body and I'll talk more about those later uh, but these type of sharks don't really grow more than about three feet long um, what I want to do for today is just kind of go over all the external structures of this shark, um, starting with um, its fins. So this shark has about seven fins. It has two dorsal fins. That means on top of its body. So it has an anterior dorsal fin and a posterior dorsal fin. Okay, it has two pectoral fins, it has two pelvic fins, and then of course its caudal fin or its tail fin. And common with other sharks, the this tail fin is known as a heterocircle tail fin which means that it's made up of two asymmetrical lobes. So it has a bigger lobe and a smaller lobe. And this tail design helps it to swim fast. Okay, so with sharks, they have muscles all throughout their body that contract and it causes this caudal tail to move back and forth in this fashion. And this gives them a lot of propulsion. Okay, and as they are propelled forward by this thrusting tail, okay, they have these pectoral fins that stick out like this to give them lift. Okay, along with their streamlined body shape, okay, this allows a shark to swim pretty fast through the ocean water. Okay. Um, some other notable features are if we look carefully at the dorsal side at the top, there are some white dots. Okay, the dorsal side of the shark is dark gray. And then if we look at the ventral side, the, the color is a lot lighter. Okay, the shark has five gill slits on each side of its body, lateral. So right here. And right here on this side, the function of gill slits is to allow water to exit out of the shark. Because as the shark swims, the shark's mouth is slightly open to allow water to enter. And then as that water current flows past the gills where oxygen absorption takes place, that water will exit out of the gill slits here. Okay, so that this is how they're doing respiration as they swim. A uh, structure that helps it with respiration is more uh, cranial, more anterior. On the dorsal side, you will see these two openings here and here. These openings are called spiracles. And what the spiracles do is they basically aid in respiration because when the sharks lie to rest on the ocean floor, okay, these spiracles continue to pump water into its head so that it can keep absorbing oxygen from the water. So it's basically just another entry point for water to move into so that the gills can absorb that oxygen from it. Okay, um, we see their eyes. The shark's eyes have the, these, this transparent film that covers them to, to protect their eyes. It has a very pointy snout known as a rostrum. Okay, part of its streamlined body shape, this torpedo shape, 
that uh, reduces the drag of the shark as it swims. Okay, on the ventral side of the rostrum, we see these two openings. These are its nostrils. They're called nares. And if we look closely at each nostril, we see that there are two openings. Okay, now these openings, one opening allows water to enter and the other opening allows water to exit. But when water enters through one opening of the nair, okay, water flows past an olfactory bulb, which is basically an organ that allows it to smell chemicals in the water. Um, and then also ventral of the rostrum are all these pores. Okay, so I'll kind of get it closer up. Okay, you can, if you look closely, you could see all these pores. Okay, this is a part of its sensory organ. Uh, they're called ampullae of Lorenzini. And basically, th these are gel-filled pores, and deep within them are these nerve cells. And these cells uh, basically pick up electrical currents from the water, okay? So electrical currents, all living things release a very weak electrical field. And the ampullae of Lorenzini, right, these sensory organs can pick up those electrical fields. So they're very good at sensing um, organisms around them. Another uh, sensory organ that I want to show you guys is on the lateral side. So I'm trying to get a good shot of it here. So all along the lateral side, we see the lateral line. So it's this faint line right here that extends through the length of the shark. Okay, all along the shark's body, there's this lateral line. You can see it right here. All of this is a lateral line. What this does is that it basically uh, picks up vibrations and movement in water. It can detect sound waves in the water, okay? So one of the reasons that the sharks are masters of the water um, being at the top of the food chain is that they're very fast swimmers, that they have features of predators, they have the rows of very sharp teeth, and they have all these sensory organs so that they can sense where their prey is located, okay? Uh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and take a look at those teeth. Okay, so rows and rows of sharp pointy teeth. So it's just like all sharks, these teeth are shed, but new ones are always growing back in to replace the shed teeth. But they use these teeth to bite and, and rip their prey. The last feature I wanted to go over with you guys is um, determining the sex of the shark. And you can um, see this if you examine in between the pelvic fins here on the ventral side of the shark. Okay, so in between the pelvic fins, we could see sex organs. So these pencil-shaped structures right here are called claspers. And this tells me that this is a male shark, okay? Female sharks do not have these claspers. Okay, instead what they have is this opening called the cloaca, but this is a, a male shark. And so when male sharks mate, they insert one of these claspers into the cloaca of a female and they release um, their sperm. They, they release seminal fluid inside the cloaca, okay? Okay, so this is the spiny dogfish shark. Last thing I wanted to, to uh, go over is anterior to each dorsal fin.
we see these notches where the those venomous spines once were. Um, but these venomous spines basically pierce the enemies of this shark and it releases a, a mild venom. Okay, so they use those spines anterior to their dorsal fins for defensive purposes. Okay. So everyone, this is the spiny dogfish shark. In the next episode, I am going to be cutting into it, dissecting it, and showing some important internal organs. Thank you.